Welcome to the meeting point on Delta Television. My name is Michael Ikogo. Today we'll be looking at the topic free fall of Naira. Call for concern. Today Nigerians are here to come to terms why the value of Naira keep fluctuating and um, on the downward trend giving people the reason to ask why the present administration and all those involved in monitoring policy have not been able to address the situation. This has also occasioned the rise in prices of commodities in the market, thereby reducing the value of the Naira. To the extent that when you even go to the market to buy commodities, you will be surprised and wondering whether you were attacked by hoodlums who made a cut away with your cash. But when you take a clear look at your purchase, you will realize that nothing is missing. But the only thing that has contributed is the falling standard of the value of Naira. That is the issue we are going to look into in today's episode of the meeting point. And I have in the studio two gentlemen of the press. By my immediate left is Comrade Friday Akbome Jaro. He is a reporter with the Plus Television Lagos. Thank you, sir. Friday, you are welcome to the studio. Thank you, sir. We also have in the studio Comrade Johnson Ebigide. He is uh, the editor Data Bulletin. And he works with the State Minister of Information here in Asaba. You are welcome to the studio. Thank you so much, my chairman. Let me, let me start with you. Uh, I know that um, recently you have been you know, shortling um, Asaba and Bini. And um, you are also aware of uh, what is happening in the market space with regards to the value of Naira to other currencies that they use particularly to transact business mm -hmm. at the global sphere. How do you feel that your currency, once revered Naira, is now nothing to write home about? Yes, uh, let me once more thank the viewers there for being there for us this uh, night. Uh, that is a very good issue that you, um, that you raised. You know, it's just you mentioned it the other time that uh, someone may go out to the market to purchase something maybe with 10,000 naira. By the time he, got, uh, he must have bought one or two, three, four things, he will start searching himself, wondering what happened to what he had on him. And he will be thinking that uh, maybe he must have thrown some of his, um, some of the news away. He will be looking up and down. But when he will go and check properly, he will see that after buying so, uh, some of these items, that is exactly what is left on him. It, it indicates the free fall of the Naira because any currency that is weak, when you are purchasing, uh, you know, before you know what's happening, you are left with nothing. So, and that is a very embarrassing situation in any, in any country. I know of a country, which I don't mention here, where people talk in terms of millions when they want to buy just a loaf of bread. And so we'll just pray that we don't fall so low to that level. Because by the time you are, your currency is priced so low, it becomes a worthless uh, um, uh, document, a, a worthless uh, representative of your monetary strength. And I know of a time when in a country like uh, uh, Uganda, when uh, the army was telling the bank manager, the national, the national bank manager that uh, why are you calling Nigeria, uh, our currency toilet room? We don't believe that it doesn't go, get to that stage where we we'll just pick a thousand naira on the street and then uh, we we'll just throw it away. We'll just like ten naira is no longer valuable, uh, twenty naira is no longer valuable. It is difficult for you to buy it with fifty naira now. A hundred naira is depreciating every day. Even a cup of corn now, some people go for we'll tell you it's two hundred naira. These are things that we used to buy with five kobo, twenty kobo in those days. And I went buy in those days in the university. We used to feed for the whole moon for just uh, um, five naira or um, a whole year. You, you are going to pay for your house rent 
for just uh, 90 naira. But today, people are paying 270,000, 370,000 naira. Someone is earning 350,000 naira. He hardly can pay his house rent, nor can he or she uh, pay children's school fees or feed himself properly. And that is because of the, the standard that uh, the naira has depreciated to. And it calls for concern. I love that topic that you brought before us this evening. And I believe that uh, the, those leading us, our leaders, should look critically into this because it's also about becoming the president or becoming the governor or becoming whoever we want to be as the leader of the country or who wants to govern us. It's about thinking about our, um, uh, our economy, the GDP. How strong is it? Is it that we cannot do something about it to the extent that uh, at the end of the day, someone will have about 20,000 naira? And without 20,000 naira, you can do so many things. Today, we hold 100 million naira. And people will be wondering that a plot of land is about 500 million. What used to go for just 50,000 naira? Yeah, now you are selling it for 100 million. And you have a lot of money all over the place, flying all over the place. Bundles of it, and at the end of the day, it's depreciating. And there's need for us to look critically into the reason behind this free fall of the naira. And the, the reason that, uh, or rather the way we should tackle it and ensure that uh, we go back to what it used to be. I know that in the 70s or early 80s, the naira was stronger than the dollar. Then all of a sudden, we call us, we, that's what they call uh, the second tier market, whatever. And uh, the thing started uh, going bad from one naira to, or uh, is it four, well, yes, one naira to four dollars. Then all of a sudden, it went to 22. About I even stepped in down that is fixing it at the official rate at 22. But uh, the black market was selling at about 56. Today, now, what are we hearing about? It could be 700 yesterday. Today is 600. The following day is 570. And uh, that is very worrisome. Anything that is not stable is not something that is uh, dependable. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, Friday, uh, you had um, Johnson Ibiki there. How do you feel yourself that um, uh, your, your, your neither cannot even, you know, be used to buy anything? He, he really told us that uh, five naira is no, nothing to write home about now. Ten naira you cannot use to buy anything. To accept twenty naira. The raise on that blade, I think, is over over 30 naira now. It is a blade. Buy one naira, buy that we to buy those 10, 10, 10 naira, 20 kobo. It's now about um, 50 naira. So, how do you feel that uh, today you go to the market with um, a bundle of 100,000 naira and you come back home searching yourself to see if um, there was a um, you know, loss on the way? Well, for me, we have a very bad economy in this country. And we are not into production in this country. All we do is to import basic, basic everything that we are using, we used to import it. And such things does not have value to your currency. Now, let's take us back. Five, seven years ago, during that it was 2015, 2016, we are into a lot of production in this country. We do import, but not as much as we have now. Seven years ago? Yeah, that's 2015. Talk about 2015, 24. That's about seven years ago. During the time during the of a uh, uh, yeah. Jonathan, dollar was the the highest at that time was 250 to 20 from 180. And at that time, we have a lot of product that we produce here in Nigeria. But as of up today, there is nothing we are producing anymore. What we do, we import them. And we begin to import product from outside the country. You begin to see your money has no value because it has no circulation and nothing is going on. And remember, just a few weeks ago, a CBA came out with a policy that nobody should exchange Naira with dollar anymore. The reason why they came with such is that they now discovered that we have no better economy anymore. And the country is depreciated and Naira is depreciated. What, what do we do? At least to change the narrative of the system. They have to come out with a policy to check net activity. As I speak to you today now, dollar is coming down gradually. For the, I think for about six months now, what is happening barely today has not happened in this country because of the new policy being introduced by CBN. And we decided to look at what we got from the market. Remember, our major product in Nigeria, in Nigeria is crude oil. And since the downfall of crude oil, our land has no value anymore because that is the major tool used as estate in the foreign market. So, and this has caused a lot of problem. But if we want to boost Nigeria economy, we have a good Nigeria who understand the economy in this country. 
But I will tell you this day that in this present government, I'm not saying the, the Minister of Finance is not good, but they have better people. They have people who have idea, knowledge on how to build a, a country economy. For example, you can look at UK, look at America. They have that problem too, but they, they will tell you that what they, their economic man is a man who they believe has an idea to grow up economy. Because one, if you have a bad economic system, the country cannot grow. And when, when the country cannot grow, things will not go well. First of all, we have corrupt leaders. These are a major problem that cause the economy. Two, the insecurity has caused us a lot of problems. And now we have no lights. Light has dropped. We, have, we are facing insecurity. Foreign investors are not coming. Look at Ghana, for example. There was a time Nigeria Naira is higher than uh, Ghana cities. But today, it has become something of the past. Now, Ghana has a better economy than Nigeria because like, they all came back together. Let's come, let's sit, let's check our problem. Let's see what is going on. And they begin to think in the right direction. They begin to check media say. But in Nigeria today, nobody wants to know. What we are interested in is not our economy at all, it's personal interest. Look at what is going on. As we speak right now, everybody is going to politics. Nobody wants to know how to better the life of the common man. And if the economy is good, I will tell you, this will come better. Okay, look at it now. We are telling you to, that uh, we should produce local rice. Producing local rice that should be more cheaper for us to get from the market. Because of insecurity, we can't let that go to farm. Get local rice is more too expensive. Now, right, local rice is about seventy thousand dollars per bag that we produce right here in our city, even from our local villages. Like from those that have our better rice, and all that from Benin they have rice. But why do we do it? How can we go to farm again? We cannot because of those security. And those is, those issues also affect the economic also because when you cannot produce, how will you have a better economy? There is no way you get it. Because a lot of things has caused so many problems in this country. Like for today now, the black market rate, like for today, the black market rate, as I'm speaking right now, is 710 naira per dollar. Now, if you want to buy from the bank, it's 618 naira. And what they are selling, if you want to sell, is 710 naira. But in the exchange rate from the bank is 410 naira, you can see. And the reason why they have a lot of problems is this. Thank God the CBN has bought a million that have checked with the activity of virtual in Nigeria. Now, you get dollar, no matter how amount of dollar you are looking for, you get to the black market within two hours. But you go to the bank, you cannot get it. And this has caused us a lot of problems. And remember, with time rates now, I will let you understand one thing that Nigeria system is getting depreciating every day. Let us leave politics. Okay, okay. okay. We'll, we'll come to how the, our politicians have not really helped help matters. Because uh, what what is the implication of this um, the 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 downfall of uh, Naira on the common man? Yes, it's just like uh, thank you so much, Shaman. It's like uh, rich reaching what I said before because I already mentioned that because uh, you mentioned it yourself that someone goes to the market to buy an item or two. And uh, maybe he, has, he thought he had a bundle of the naira on him, and all of a sudden he got home. He was besetting himself. <laughs> it gives a lot of depression to his mind. He believes that the naira has not helped him at all. He will be looking for a way to get a stronger currency like the dollar, or the pound sterling, or the Dutch mark, or the euro, <laughs> uh, which are they call them strong, uh, stronger uh, currencies. So, but um, the main problem that that is actually befronting the common man is that the common man is priced low. For example, uh, uh, he's a worker and he just say, no, your salary is 20,000 naira. No, okay, let's look at our minimum wage is 30,000 naira. What can 30,000 naira afford today with the fall of the naira? It is nothing. So the man cannot pay his house rent. He cannot easily uh, feed his children, not to talk of himself now. He cannot um, go for any entertainment or any recreational something that will make him uh, look fresher than he should be like in the western world where you you go on vacation you, you cannot save so you are eating from your hand to the mouth as they say and that is just a very bad uh, development it brings a lot of uh, problems the issue of suicide and uh, every other thing that we're hearing about people committing suicide this is a time of the thing because if you cannot break even you say what am I even doing in this world so it's we are cascading towards a very dangerous uh, 
precipices. And that there is need for those that are leading us, who are our leaders, to look at claim to reach. It's not about being the president or the governor. At the end of the day, you are comfortable because you have a lot of the bombings to take home. But that person that is earning less, how does he break even? You can have 200 million, then you, of course you can break even. If I am coming from Benin, for example, and uh, I want to buy fuel, uh, that is uh, petrol, uh, that premium uh, liquid that we use for our cars, and I bought 5,000 naira. The, the rich man will not buy uh, the 5,000 naira, the politicians. What they buy is maybe 50, 20,000 naira in the full tank. And so the common man is the one actually suffering uh, the whole thing. I want to actually um, link up with what my colleague just mentioned now. That uh, because we are not productive, Nigeria is very dependent on uh, um, importation. We love foreign goods so much. We even love the language we are speaking here now than even our local languages. And for that reason, it has, uh, it is on, it's on doing us. And at the end of the day, where, where are we? We are cascading every day. And the Naira is the measure of our economy. It is the measure of our capacity. It is the measure of our growth. It is the measure of the GDP. And GDP is your gross domestic product. If you cannot have a strong currency, it means that you are not productive. That is how I see it. Okay, the, the, the National Youth Council recently, you know, blamed um, the central bank uh, governor, Godwin Emefile, his poor economic management policy for the recent fall uh, of the Naira. You understand? And they have said that, the, the, uh, that there, are, there are people who are also mopping up the dollar to keep baby for, for election. How, how, how do you react to that? That the, the, the governor of the central bank has not been able to, you know, Manage the economy. No, no, no. Let me just that, that is why we are where we are. Uh, okay. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, sir. Let me let's leave Friday out of that, for example. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is that even these people that are bringing these policies, they are responsible for the sales of the dollar higher than the naira at the black market. Because you can see all of it. If you go to the ring road in Benin now, or you go to Bugunugo here, I don't want to measure other cities now, you will see a lot of people. I don't want to measure where they are coming from, queuing up. Calling, is it dollar I want to change? Is it dollar I want to change? Who gave them these dollars? These people are not the owner of the dollars. Somebody who is better off in the society is the owner of the dollars and the pound sterling and all these hard currencies. And they are only fronting for them. So it's not about someone um, trying to make it difficult because he himself is a common man. The people that are exchanging this dollar in the black market, just like he said just today now, uh, just now, that at the official rate, it's about uh, 400 and, uh, what did you call it now? 400, uh, 400, 400 and uh, 16 or whatever, yeah. that's about 400. But if you go to the uh, black, if you go to the bank, you don't get it. So you cannot buy at 400. You must go to the black market to get it at 700 or 650. So it's like a business that someone believes that you can go to the bank, mop it up at 400 and uh, um, 16, like you mentioned, then you will hold it somewhere for somebody else to go out and sell. And somebody is in a hole to get um, um, a dollar uh, or some dollars. What he does is that, what am I going to do in the bank? You go to the bank manager, no, we don't have anything. Then you go to the black market and you buy at a, a higher rate. I remember when I, 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 bought, I, know, I can mention his name, I'm sorry. When he was the, um, the head of state, he, 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 he put it down at 22. But it was selling for about 56. So people will now go and buy at official rate through the stock market at uh, 22 quickly and then hold it. After, it's just like someone holding petrol now. You see, so the issue is not about uh, the, the, the black marketer. It's about those people that are responsible for it. Those people that are sponsoring the, the purchase and holding of the, of the dollars so that it will be difficult for, for whoever want to uh, do foreign exchange to get. Because if you are going to be productive, for example, you need foreign exchange to buy this machinery, to buy raw material, like if you are producing bread. Of course, you know now, about two weeks ago now, there have been a strike about the bakers going on strike, and the loaf of bread has gone be beyond the reach of the common man now. Because if you don't have up to a thousand naira now, you hardly can get a loaf of bread, that is the, the standard size, which used to go for about 600 naira. And they have done two. And I will not blame them for that, because they, most of the items they use, made and other things, 
are imported barley, which is a wheat, we call it wheat here now. They are imported. Even people producing beer that we drink today, most of these things are imported here. I, I, I am told that even some bottle of beer has gone to up to 500 naira instead of 350, 400. So you now see the value cascading every second, being the fact that uh, the exchange rate is higher than what is uh, the naira can accommodate. And so the naira is going to melt every day, the fact being beaten down every day, and that is what we are passing through. Okay, I think uh, they, they, they have displayed the number there. Call us, you can call to participate in the program. The number to call is on the screen there. 0812 uh, 1066 1012 The other number is 0807 You can call to make your contribution. How you feel about the fallen um, value of Naira? day in day out how it's affecting your economy how it's affecting even your home your immediate homes Th those are the things we are, we are looking at today uh, the, the the central bank governor also has said that um that no remittance of um, foreign of dollar to the foreign reserve by NMPC is also responsible which um, the national youth council of nigeria uh, president led by comrade uh, solomon adodo said it's not it's not possible so we, this blame game is not only happening in, um, in, in our political sphere, it's also happening even in, the, in, our, in our economy. Uh, Friday, do you agree with um, Imefile, all the excuses he has given us as far as um, the reason he has advanced that is why we are having a fallen uh, standard of uh, the Naira? Well, for me, both of them are head of different agency and uh, like we all is aware that the price of oil have totally depreciated in this country and which is our major source of generated revenue in this country but uh, the central bank governor is into financial control in this country and he knows how to manage the cash policies but remember what NPC fronts business on Nigeria and whatever they do at the international market should be will return down to the Nigeria account as a CBN control finance budget. But for me, the reason why those things is going on is this. You know Nigeria is the way we do things. We don't really work together as one as unity. And because of the selfish interest we have, we begin to look for ways to siphon money. Now uh, the NPC has their own policy, while the CBN has their own policies. And there are agents of government, which I believe whatever being transacted at the China market should be well accounted for, because this money is not their personal money. And this is why Nigerians are facing a lot of problems. And being the central Hello? 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 We lost it. Now, the, since what we are expecting from the NPC is not coming, definitely the Naira will drop. And as the Naira begins to drop, the CBN don't have to think of way out. Hello? Hello? Yeah? Hello? Hello? Let it continue. So, the Naira begins to drop. And you just remember that recently the CBN government came out with a policy. The reason why it came out with the demand for dollar is on the higher side than the Naira. And the only way to checkmate the economy of this country is to try to balance the Naira with the dollar. Remember, I think about two years ago, when you receive money from your brother or your sister in, our, in abroad, we go to bank, they will probably give you Naira, not dollar. But this about four or five months ago, it now becomes something different from what we have been seeing in the banking sector. Now they give you dollar to dollar. And with such things, it will really affect the economies of this country. Remember in America, if they should send you euro in America, they will give you euro in America, they will give you dollar. They should send you do, uh, dollar in, euro, in the end of the Europe, they will not give you dollar, they will give you euro. Plus, in a way to build up their economy. But in Nigeria, is a, a quite different ball game. And such system will not help our country. It will not have value to our Naira. And that is why we have a rethink. And I also appreciate the CBN government for this new policy. Remember, this is the first time we are in the eight months in 2022 now. This is the first time we to experience downfall of Naira. Uh, Hello? 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 
This is the first time we are experiencing downfall of dollar. It's a shock. It probably some person may celebrate it, but we tell Christian we not celebrate it. The common man will celebrate it because it's really affecting us. But the politician will not celebrate because it's going to cause an effect on them. Now they have a budget of this is what we want to do with our dollars. What that you need to understand? Every business, there are also people behind the business. But what you get or what you have in the poor black market is more what the bank has. And banks control regulation of Naira notes. And now, the new person that came out that was able to check the system on that. There is no way you get more dollar outside the banking sector. Because why? If, can, if I cannot come to me and say, take Naira and give me dollar. Because at the arena, it is no longer a crime now for you to exchange Naira with dollar now. Then the demand of dollar will not drop. If you want to do any business outside this country, you will pay your money in Naira. When you get to that country, you can send it in dollar over there. But you have been using Naira here to, to make the economy grow, to, make, to pull out a lot of things, and to check the activities of exchange of dollars, and to build more economic in this country. For me, the NPC have to come out and tell us what they are really doing with Nigeria well, because that is a major sector in this country. And this, just watch what is going to happen now. Since the CBC has come out with this new law of this exchange of dollar now, you will see a lot of things will unfold itself in a few days from now. But uh, this is not the first time such policy will be coming in. How are they going to enforce it to ensure that um, Nigeria has really comply with the, with the um, policy? Well, um, Chairman, thanks so much. Um, let me still thank our viewers for sitting there for us. Um, I want to categorically disagree with uh, whatever is going on here by saying that uh, by checkmating uh, it does not work. I may not have read economics in the university, but I know I did it in the secondary school level. There is what they call the forces of demand and supply. And so you cannot force someone to pay higher than what the person does not want. It is the forces it is the force of demand that is the, the, the pulling force of the of uh, demand and supply that actually control. Hello? Could be network. Sorry, uh, continue. So it could, the, force, the forces of demand and uh, supply are responsible for price control. You cannot, even uh, during the military era, in the most of the made days, people went and said, look, you shouldn't sell a bag of gari more than this. The person has the right to keep his gari at home without coming out. And at the end of the day, because he's not supplying it, and you are demanding, the thing will go up. So by the time you say, no, you don't want to sell a dollar, it should be 406. And people are still looking for it up and down. People will go on that ground and, buy, and they will buy it at 800 naira to one dollar. And you think you are still selling at 460. The naira is still leaking somewhere. So forcing people to buy or to peg it somewhere may not work until the economy is stabilized. And what stabilizes the economy? Productivity. High level productivity, quality productivity, so that people will not be interested in buying um, locally manufactured uh, goods and then strengthen the economy. By the time you say that the dollar should be one naira to, I uh, mean, one naira to. Uh, Hello? Hello? Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Be next work, maybe I could be. All right, so, go ahead. by the time you force the dollar to drop against the the naira, and the naira is weaker, you will not see that those that are looking for the dollar for um, their productivity may not have it, and then the economy will work will worsen now. And then before you know what's happening, instead of even the six hundred and uh, one dollar uh, to six hundred that we are getting now, it will be worse. Hello. This network issue. So my argument is just to round it off that we don't need to peg it. What I will find is level. When we start to up our productivity and the economy is strengthened, the dollar cannot beat the naira. But if you say no, because the CBM policy says that you should be selling a dollar for just five naira and nobody is interested in it, it means that you are just putting it there. People will still go and underground and buy it. I know of some market women that will fix their union prices of tomato of a bag of maybe a, bag, um, a basket full of it for 10,000. They say it must be 10,000. Some will say, My own is rolling up. They bring 2,000 and I let me girls go. And what do you do? The money is selling more than you. 
If you search five bags, that is ten thousand, and you are still waiting for the union. So we still look at the corruption issue that you mentioned before. Because we are corrupt, we don't believe in ourselves. We believe in our selfish in, uh, in, uh, interest. We believe that whatever we are doing is for our own benefit. That is why we are still suffering this. But all boils down to the economy. All boils down to our gross domestic product. Our productivity is the one that will control the fall of the Naira a dollar against the Naira. It is not by pegging it policy-wise that the dollar should be three Naira to one Naira. No, no, no. It is our productivity. You cannot force somebody who is low mentality uh, minded to come and become a doctor somewhere and you say no, that person will go and perform well in an hospital. So many people will be killed. But if someone is qualified, he knows what to do, he will give high no price. And that is how it is. You cannot price the Naira above the dollar now when the Naira is almost worthless. It is not possible, no matter how you peg it. I, I, I want to agree with you when we, we talk about um, production. Yes. A case in point is the issue of this um, wheat okay. that has given rise to cost of bread the because of war in uh, uh, Russia and Ukraine. Uh -huh. It boils down to the fact that we are not producing wheat. If we are producing at all, I don't think it can feed the one state in Nigeria. <laughs> so that has invariably affected them, um, affected the, the cost of bread and other uh, what, it, what, what they call it? confectionaries, confectionaries. like um, egg roll, meat pile, mm. donut, and what have From you. The bakers. So Friday, the, uh, we are all, we're also talking about their uh, production, and production is not something that we are going to say we want to start today and tomorrow. Uh, the products we are, we are producing will come to the market. It must take time to really invest in those in the, in the, in the sector, production sector, before the result we, we start coming in. That is where I want to agree with Friday that the policy of the the central bank, if really you know uh, monitored and um, enforced, could also contribute to the stability of Naira as as we go into into production. Friday, how how do you think? Um, there's another another school of thought that said that uh, the rise cost of uh, dollar is as a result of political politicians talking stockpiling dollar to, to present the present, present, present election. Do you agree with that? Well, uh, for me, we are all Nigerians, and we have rights to keep whatever we feel for our personal interest. But what I have seen so far that the government says is not helping matters. Let's really express ourselves. One thing is this: for a better economy, the government the government need to encourage the citizens of the country to production. And now, because they knew we are not into production, and they knew that we are very very hungry, and they knew they have changed our meta. Hello. Hello. And they knew that they have changed our meta thinking. So they decided to keep the dollar for their selfish interest. Fine, they have the right. But at the same time, they should also think that Nigerians has right so to have a better living. For example, in some African country that is very close to us, they also use coins, what they call persue. That is coins, our 50 cobo, 40 cobo, 100 they use 10 cobo. 10 cobo. Like in Ghana, they use coins called persuade, 10 persuade, 20 persuade. In Benin Republic, they use it. And with such things, give value to their cities because they have this local product that you can afford and it is real. But in Nigeria, we have no local product that we can afford. Hello? Hello? Go ahead. In Nigeria, we have no local product that we can afford by the very common poor man. Like, for example, if you don't have about 500 that you cannot even eat in a Sabaye. And maybe somebody who has 200 now, what do we do? He can't even eat. And so, for me, the government has to, for me, the government has to come in force and work with the citizen by encouraging local production effectively. And if they want to encourage local production, it should not be politicized at all. There should not be politics in the game. Because we now discover that when government is coming out with any policy that will benefit the common man, it will be a more difficult class. Hello? 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 Yeah? Your name and location, please. Bye. Well, 
for those who have not been able to reach us, uh, the studio here is we are very, having a lot of challenge. Keep trying. Luckily, you will, um, you will, you will skate through. So, if they want the economy to grow, they should come out with a policy that will benefit all Nigerians, not some group of Nigerians. And they should also encourage Nigerians who want to go into production. Because we discovered this is that the government will not encourage Nigerians to go into production. The reason is this. If I have an idea of having a local production or local product in Nigeria, and I don't have a capital resource to establish such business, and I decide to apply for loan, the condition will give to me, I can't even go with such condition. And even the government will not come to say, okay, these are policies that let's give them a leverage. I think they can assess to, to establish a product that will also help the growth of the economy. No. And if there's an opportunity from the government, they will also channel it to a different uh, group of persons that they take it to benefit them or their family, which is wrong. And these are the major problems that is affecting the Nigeria economy, not just the dollar. If we, the Nigeria government can work on such things, you see we begin to have a, a better society. You begin to have a local product, just like local rice. If there's a good road, there's no insecurity. They have this manual. God make him and say, okay, you have about 20,000 acres of land for farming, for rice production. And this is that we need genuine rice farmers, not political rice farmers. And you know, definitely you now have to put those people, genuine rice farmers now, into that 200 acres of land. I will tell you that at the end of that year, they can give up probably about 1,000 bags of rice. For example, then you go to maybe like Bini, Cassava farm, Nyan farm, you take it round the city state. You will not discover that our economy will not change. You will not will have a change and liberal economy. And at that time, production will be more and purchase of goods will be more cheaper. Because if I can get Gary from my neighboring village, but a little bit true, rice and bread, the cost will not be high. And the economy will not be high. Yes, yes. Because we can see we can live. But as we speak right now, there is no such policy in Nigeria. What they think of how to, to come and say, this has done wrong, that has done wrong, vote for me, I will change the system. We are still ruling in the same system. I will bet you and I will tell you the gospel through 2015, 2014, 2030 is more better than where we are now. At that time, we don't even have local rice that less than It was not even there. We are only importing rice from foreign countries. But bag of rice. Hello? Hello? Yeah? Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Speak up. I'm coming from Asaba. What is your name, please? Asaba. Okay, make your contribution. Asaba. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Your name and location. Okay, go ahead, sir. Uh, my contribution goes to show. This Nigeria I want to make now, uh, all of The only thing they can do is that let them let them let them remove one source One, two, let them provide the food for the farmers. Those people that are cultivating cassava, rice. All these things. Let us make a make a uh, bring a good man for the culture. Let us let us invest more into agriculture to provide more food, so that we cannot be able to import from other countries. By 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 something in the spoken more to other countries, then we will be getting our our economy will be growing. So. What is in that fucking this this that that looking down backward our back days when when we are children we used to go to farm. How many children now have know how to cultivate in the farm? Because during our old those old days, you have me in specialist, I have my own home, I have my own shovel, I have my own cup of likewise like my kidneys. Now this our days, some of our children don't know where our farm is. Talkless of going to the farm or talkless of cultivating. If you come to Korea, most landlords, 
discipline of their blood to cultivate corn, cassava, and many things to provide food for their children. And they think that it's a hard to do so. But coming to Ontario, you see it's very difficult These people going to farm. So all these things will not we have us. This is good kind of the so that is my own contribution. Thank you very much. But the, 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 the physical is uh, in, you know speaking in line with what we are, what I just suggested. Mm. How the government can support genuine farmers, not political farmers, yeah. to go into agriculture because some of these things we are talking about now, like if we are able to take care of our, of our feeding as a, as a country, mm. I think we are solving a certain um, level of our problem. Mm. Yes, you understand because feeding is one one major thing that we must look into. So, uh, but again. The if it's good day's contribution, how, how how do you see it, and how do you think Nigerian government can really do um, key into it and uh, ensure that uh, farmers are empowered to go into full scale um, in you know, the When he spoke, he actually mentioned something. And what was it he said? He said he had his school, his cutlasses, and the other and uh, family items. He said, but it is difficult for his children and other siblings. Let's look at it. Okay. Hello. Go ahead. That is difficult for his children and other siblings of his to do what he has been doing. No, no, no. He said his siblings also have uh, had so their homes, have so their own But are the children of these days can be yeah, really like, That's what I mean, the children of these days. Yeah. So it now, it's now very clear. You know that when the president mentioned that our youths are lazy, he was being um, uh, almost killed on the street with one cascading against him. But that is actually. To some extent, very, very true. Because people are home going to the farm. They hate going to the farm these days. They don't want to work. And then um, the agriculture has been the major employer of labor in Nigeria. In fact, up to now, it's still like the major employer. Because how many people, uh, how many of us are working in the civil service or in uh, uh, private organizations? But you see a lot of people in the rural areas, they are doing farm work, fishing, and all those things. So until we go back to the basis of uh, tilling the land, uh, I remember that book I used to uh, I read those days, they call it the deserted village. Until we go back to the village we deserted, uh, we will start facing what we are facing. But the issue is just like going to the rustic, that is to the bare minimum, that is what he has just said. The main issue that we are talking about, if we fall for dollar now, is productivity. It's not even about the agricultural issue. And then, of course, we want to go to the agricultural aspect of it. We are, the, the time we are exporting, we are saying we are exporting a uh, yes. uh, granite, we are exporting palm oil, we are exporting yes. rubber. Yes. We, oh, Nigeria was also booming with that. Uh, no, the, reason, the, discovery of oil. Uh, the reason being that it has not become the it has not gone to digital world that we are now. You see, because every other country is now. No, if, if we have grown mm. digitally with the, the, the culture of farming, we would yes. have also grown in our in Exactly. You can, see, you can see even China. You know that China, the, the Chinese, they started with uh, rice, uh, Chama Mao and other, you know what he did? He took all of them to the farm and they started with it. But today you can see they are into uh, um, manufacturing uh, iron steel and all those things and they are the one construction I wrote today. They have abandoned farming as well. But initially it was, we started as well. We used to review, have a farm settlement, and so we did not um, develop that well. That is the problem. Because if we had developed it well, we have machinery to make use of it. Like he rightly pointed out, we now have political farmers instead of the actual farm. Because when they say there is a loan somewhere from central bank, you see people going in there to go and collect that loan. At the end of the day, marry more wives, build more houses. In fact, waste the money, and they don't use it for the purpose for which it was meant. And that has been a problem for us. Lost, lost. It has been a problem. So my advice, yes, agriculture is good. Even as I speak, I have planting at the back of my company. I have a, at least about three, four hundred uh, uh, yam stead in my company. There. I have all that food of pork. They are out there. The land is not too big, but I know I have all this because my father was a farmer and uh, uh, inculcated land in, in us. But what about this, my children? I have those that are not in this country. Do you want them to come back and start farming? It's also so. What is there is that. Instead of this youth copper something that you have, I need to always say it. Someone marching, marching and then climbing grass. Why don't you match these youth coppers into the farm? You ensure that they have clusters of farm. And at the end of the day, you have massive production of food items from youth coppers that are graduating and they are complaining that they have no job. By the time you do it, Nigeria will not be hungry the way we are hungry now. Though we are talking about um, the fall of dollars, but that is equally part of it. 
You don't start wearing khaki and you march. You say, look, there are some that are doing uh, CDO, whatever you call it. <coughs> Excuse me. Hello? What is this call? Your name and location, please. Your name is what? Timothy. Timothy, okay. Go ahead. Uh, so, about the way you did uh, <laughs> Alright. God, this is so far. The plan, they never going leave you. Because everything where it's going to be done. The plan, they never going leave you. Where it's going to be far. They will stop everything. Ah. Why will farm? They will come to me. I will stay back. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. No, he he also expresses fear. Yes. yes. That you go to farm now. <coughs> you know that like, the fully people will come and eat up easy go from your assigned security and all, and all that. I think the government is also looking into that some um, states have come up with them. Um, Policies. The ban on uh, open grazing. I think if it's a force, it will reduce um, the damage caused on our farmlands by That's true. by headers. Uh, well, for me, I have a different view. First of all, the youth are not lazy. The reason why I'm saying the youth are not lazy is that there is no youth in Nigeria who does not want to work. And if you ask government for tell that is going to recruit about forty thousand youth, I'm telling you. But that will, those that are going to apply for that is more than 40,000. So the youth are not lazy. To work in the farm? No, the youth are not lazy generally. And two, everybody cannot go to farm and work. We have different aspects which we can contribute to society. Now, those days, our fathers have farm. And one of the major sources of living is farming. But now we have a different way of living these days. I want to live a better life. But at the same time, remember that some years ago, with the downfall of the crude oil, they now said Nigeria should go into farming. And which we refuse, which we refuse to, to hand to that point. <coughs> but now, there's already economic crisis in Nigeria that has leads to the downfall of Naira. And the government also is trying to wake up the fall of Naira to assist we can at least stabilize some economic downfall of this country. But for me, if we want to go into such things that government should improve the economic standard, first of all, go into agriculture, there are those are into agriculture, and there are those are into production. Are you getting now? Whatever you, you produce from your farm, you have to change to other export of production that will be consumed by other group of persons. Everyone will not just go to farm, no. Like, when you go to farm now, getting rice from the farm, fine. There's nothing you have to refine it with the machine outside the farm. And there are other people that also do it as business. That will buy from the, the farm out, the man converted from the farm, the one will refine it, and the other one will take to farm for final consumption. Those are different stages that we have. The reason why we are facing this challenge is that the government should wake up to their social corporate responsibility in our society. First of all, Remember the time of our fathers. I know I was not there, but according to what we heard from them, immediately from classes or students, they call it something like that, you get a job from the government. Then you can empower yourself at that time. You now for that university. No, and, 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 and that government or private sector, because yes. the economy was booming that time. There were <laughs> industries that will occupy, that will accommodate the yes, government. Exactly. Graduates from those um, institutions. Okay, fine. Thank God we are all also aware of that. But this day you can't even get it, and you cannot even find it. During my time at the National Youth Service, I that there was no skill accusation at all. But this day they now they now dare to encourage it to go to those skill accusation because they have discovered that the country is dying, the economy is going drastically. So what do we do? We have to look for ways to secure our futures. Remember, I have a colleague. I think he has a child of about seven years. Hello? 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 Lost it. I have a colleague who so has a child of about 10 to 15, something like that. He's telling the child to go to that place. The child is going to school. But he tried to try and get something. Scale acquisition to empower his ourselves. 
we now begin to look of a different way. And those taking is from the Talakala, the poor people, not from the big men. I don't know if you are getting me. Those thinking is from the poor. The big man will tell you, my son will go to school. You make you after your first degree in Nigeria, we will take you abroad. We will do because skill acquisition. Because they have their own category. I read a, a write-up by some persons where you have, from Tafa uh, Balua, they are interrelated to uh, President, uh, President, uh, President, President Mohamed Bou, they are interrelated. And that by Eyo, Marita, a lot of things, you begin to see them. They circle their selves. And as they do, it will affect us all at the Talakawas. So now it is our time the government to wake up for to care for Nigeria, let's forget about their policies, because they have no better policies for us at all. They should think of way forward. And if they can tackle this insecurity, first of all, light, they give us good road. You will see Nigeria economy will wake up and bounce to the normal level. Hello? 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 Yeah, your name and location, please. But the, the, uh, we, we must start from somewhere. That's that's my reasoning. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because other countries that have developed that we are looking up to today, they didn't carry everything at once. Mm -hmm. You look at area of comparative advantage. Maybe okay, we are talking of agriculture now. Within the next two, three, four years, let's focus on agriculture and ensure that we produce enough food that we can, that we can that can take care of us. From, from what I learned, we still import egg from, from <laughs> outside. Yeah. Or egg that we can produce in Nigeria. If we build the capacity of our farmers and encourage them with fund, I think they will do better than what they are doing now. We were talking about a value added chain in, in agriculture. We also have a good um, account that uh, Malaysia that uh, people are looking up to now as uh, oil, oil, uh, palm oil produ producing country came, came to, came to uh, Nigeria came to uh, those states <coughs> to collect seedlings today that is what they are known for so why not we look at the problem we have in Nigeria is that we want to carry everything at once you hear that um, the computer is raining okay we want to go into computer uh, manufacturing we hear that um, they are producing a car you want to go into car production when you are not you know take build the foundation that will give you raw material for the, uh, the car production is not there. You are also importing everything from, from outside. So why not look at a, a certain area and say, okay, this is how we want to grow. Let's, let's develop uh, agriculturally and ensure that we have sufficient food to feed our people before now begin to think of other, other, other avenues. Abadike, mm. what do you make of that? Well, you said it all, and uh, I think that is the way to go because uh, in the first place, um, agriculture is the basis of life itself. That is the first profession in this world. Any other thing is secondary. If you have a, a, a man that is, is well fed, is the man that can think well. And he is the man that can plan as to how to save enough money for the upkeep of his family. Uh, but uh, he who is hungry will not have that mentality of uh, planning ahead. And so why we are not planning ahead is that we are hungry in this country and then even our leaders forget about their millionaire status. They are equally hungry because that is why they run away from us and they invest in a foreign country where their assets will be valuable to them and they're secured. So agriculture is the way to go and uh, but it is being highly politicized from uh, the various level of government in the country. Instead of um, the main uh, policy of inculcating in the youth I kept on saying it. The youths are not ready to till the soil again. The youths are ready to build skyscraper without working. They want to get the billions, in fact, even above what their parents, in fact, their colleagues did before. And so, until we complete that orientation in them, that there is need for us to go back to what is written in the Genesis, when God said that now you have disobeyed me, you will start from the scratch, the tongue shall be or whatever. It wasn't a cause. If you run away from what is going to feed you as from the agricultural perspective, you will start to dwindle in your growth. And that is what Nigeria is suffering. Nigeria is richly blessed with arable land and that uh, we can use, just like rightly pointed out that uh, before now there used to be cocoa pyramid, um, uh, cocoa, um, board and then granite pyramid 
and then they, um, the palm oil water resources that we used to have at the, in the eastern part of the country. Today we've abandoned them because we, uh, we discovered oil at Oloibiri, and uh, for that reason we don't need to work hard again. And that is what is bedeviling us. So whatever we saw as a boom is what is giving us this doom that we are passing through now. And until we go back to the basis, like I keep on telling people, it's going to be a problem. For me, I'm not saying that someone should go to the university. At the end of the day, you force it to go and farm. But there, there's a way to ensure that uh, if someone has graduated from the university and then he's going to serve his country, why don't we use that basis that we are lacking in to inculcate in him? Because I watched a program on the NTA some time ago where somebody studied uh, business management. But at the end of his uh, one year service, he went into Pigri and he later became a millionaire. You see, so if he had gone into management, maybe he would be looking for a teaching job in a primary school or whatever. But because of the little knowledge he got from that local place, he, he said that a really pig is a big business. He started it very, very small. Gradually he grew and he became a multi millionaire. It was shown on the NTA program about the entrepreneur. So what I'm trying to say is that let the federal government in, brought that into the NYSE. You can go and read philosophy, religious knowledge that you may not easily get a job. But if they start, just like the rightly reported that they are not bringing in skill acquisition to the service, yes. But as they are bringing this skill acquisition into the service, sometimes they, they teach you how to do carpentry or maybe barbering, whatever. Agriculture should be the very first thing they should teach. Uh, do you know that some people don't even know how to plant the corn? As a graduate, you tell them to go and plant corn, they don't know it. You see, so how do you want to go and feed yourself if you cannot even have a little garden? I remember a question feed your nation, uh, feed the nation by your bathroom job. He was trying to tell people that the only way you can survive is that for everybody to be a farmer. That was the meaning of operation feed the nation, OFN. If everybody is into farming, it means that everybody will not be hungry. Because a little, uh, um, what we call granite at the back of your house, maybe um, pepper, a little vegetable, this and little, uh, maybe two, three, uh, yam, stead, or whatever. At the end of the day, the day we are harvesting it, you'll be happy. And say, I know, so these days I've been seeing people showcasing it on, on the Facebook. Say, I know, this is from my farm, plantain I've been getting from my farm. If everybody is doing that, this issue of people taking that to jog early in the morning is better off. It will not be necessary because when you are working your farm, why will you have the time to go and jog and waste all your energy by running up and down? Our father never used to jog. What he did was to try to their farm, and by the time they come back, they are stronger than you that is in the office. And that is what we should start to inculcate in our uh, youth, so that at the end of the day, our value orientation will be that hard work piece. And where does it start from? From farming. Okay, I, I think um, we, we got strong at the time. Uh, when um, uh, our, our politicians started to live flamboyant life, mm -hmm. lifestyle. I know that you can't, you can't stop it. You have other, uh, some persons who are also living flamboyantly in a, in, a, in developed world. But most of them are not doing that at the expense of the masses' resources. That's they, they struggle to get their money. Like Donald Trump, the former president of America, was already a billionaire before he became the president of America. And I, I, I don't think he used American money to... to to do jamboree like our politicians are doing today. If we, if we want to correct some of these things, we must begin to see change in our, in the, in our leaders. Assuming you, you, are, you, are, you are a senator, you are, people visit you and they discover that you are in your garden at, at the back of your house, you know, tending your, tending your yam or, or clearing your you know, tomato garden. The way they go back, they will be encouraged to do that. But we have, they have you know, in, in, taught us that um, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. You understand. But finally, as as we round up um, in this in this episode of the of the meeting point, what do you think this federal government can do to really help in stabilizing Nile? What first thing you need to do is to encourage massive production in all areas. If it is test of agriculture companies engage the youths and build up security and major level constant power supply because there is constant power supply there will be excess of production and the cost of production will not be high if you probably run a gym for a day it's going to cost you over five thousand electricity will not cost you five thousand per day 
and your product in the next day will not cost up to 500 naira in each product. I think that would be about 300 naira per product. So such things will reduce the sufferings of the Nigerian youths. But what we are seeing this is that because of there is no constant power supply, we run into run, uh, into diesel and fuel, and such things has affected cost of production, which has brought hardship to Nigerians. So if the federal government has a have need a retain and believe in the masses, not what they believe in, I'm seeing revolution coming in Nigeria through political strategy. That when the system of this 23 generation comes and there's a change, it will send a strong message down to the political elite and the leadership of this country that things need to be done. For me, the president has to go back to that dream board and see the cost of Nigeria. We are we are smiling, we are suffering and smiling. And they should make political opposition uh, uh, political opposition as part time. If we could encourage such political process as part-time, senator part-time, red part-time, you see corruption will stop. And once there is limit to corruption, the economic system of this country will grow. At that time, those at the electricity supply, electricity production, we think of putting a lot of money that is established electricity into power generation. Power, okay. Yes. Th thank you very much, ma'am. Come on Friday. Uh, yes. What was your take as we, as we round up? Yes, uh, well, like I, I, I've been saying it before now. Uh, until we have mental reorientation of ourselves, we remain where we are. It's a cyclical evil that uh, we need to break away from. There is need to reorient, reorient uh, the, 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 the populace because what our vision and uh, what we are eyeing is not the way it should be. You see, when you are eyeing a mirage, you think that that thing is there, and then before you get there, you don't find it. And that is why we are from one year, there have been so many uh, plan. They say from 2020 to 20 this, from 2030, but it's like a mirage. We are driving on the highway. Before you get to the place, you, f you you cannot find it. You think that it was a river, but before you get there, it's not there. So we need to have that mental reorientation to change our perspective of uh, what we are seeing and how we are seeing it, and then ensure that we don't start, to, we don't, we, we stop to deceive ourselves. But as it is now, it's like we are wearing the mask, and when you wear the mask, you think that people are not going to see you one day. Your face is what you are hiding, but one day you definitely remove the mouth because you must breathe very well. And when you remove it, you now see that you have a lot of scars on your face. So let us reorientate ourselves, change our mindset, and start to think our right and uh, put our um, capacity into play. Ensure that at the end of the day, we actually get what we have at the back of our mind instead of deceiving ourselves. Okay, thank you very much. Comrade um, Johnson, I want to thank you for your contribution today. Thank you Comrade for Freddy, having me. Comrade Freddy Akwame Yes. I also Thank you for making it to today's program. Thank you. Are, uh, Nigeria is really experiencing a um, downturn as far as Nara is concerned. And if no deliberate step is taken by the government to address the situation, we may witness worse days as we pro progress into 2023 election. Um, production is the key. Any country that is a dumping program for other countries that are into production will hardly make an uh, inroad in terms of uh, development. Therefore, we must have a retreat. And as we approach the 2020 election, Nigerians should begin to engage the uh, aspirants on how they, they want to turn around the fortune of this country to become a production, a, pro, a producing nation rather than a consuming nation. I think that is what will take us out of the woods as we approach the 2020 election. Uh, join us later tomorrow for a, another episode of The Meeting Point. My name is Michael Ikoko.